So I'm curious, because I asked Armstrong Brothers this before, how do you feel You know, space education has uh, changed over the years? I, I think there's an, a, an immense interest for space exploration today. Um, when we look back 50 years, uh, kids were very captivated by the Apollo program. But uh, working at the Air and Space Museum, I see millions of visitors coming every year. And enthusiasm for space exploration really hasn't waned. I mean, it's, it's there. Um, just in, in the sheer numbers alone, the kids in particular seem really captivated by space flight. Did you ever want to be an astronaut yourself? I'm curious. <laughs> No, I've never wanted to be an astronaut. I'm uh, afraid of heights and claustrophobic, so I always wanted to be a historian of uh, astronomy and space exploration, and so I'm exactly what I want to be. <laughs> I'm surprised you're afraid of heights. <laughs> What's that? I'm surprised you're afraid of heights. <laughs> I don't know. Yes, I, I, I don't think I could have gone into the, you know, the command module on top of the Saturn V rocket. I, I, I'm not that brave. <laughs> What does it mean to you to be a part of this moment, to uh, have kind of an attachment to this one really special moment that's frozen in time for a lot of people and you know, now you're kind of a part of its legacy and you're with the Armstrong Brothers, what does that mean to you? Uh, I feel extraordinarily lucky. Um, I, I came to this topic at, at a, a perfect moment and I've had the opportunity to speak to many of the astronauts who were involved in the program as well as uh, people who worked on all different dimensions of um, Project Apollo, in including um, public diplomacy, which is my particular area of research. And so I, I just feel uh, extremely lucky that um, I've had the opportunity to speak to so many people who were involved uh, firsthand. And how do you feel about NASA and SpaceX these days? Um, you know, there was, there's was there been some tragedies in the past with NASA. Do you think overall their legacy has come back? Or? I think um, if you just walk down the street, you get a sense of um, how, how NASA uh, has maintained a lot of enthusiasm among the general public. And you see people wearing NASA paraphernalia all the time who do not work for NASA. And I think that's, a, that's quite a sign. It's, it's hard to imagine any other uh, government agency that um, people wear their t-shirts uh, just because they're so excited about the work that they do. Did you get your own from Urban Outfitters? That's true. I mean, people get them from all over. Um, but you, you see them everywhere. And it always reminds me that, you know, there is a lot of uh, sort of public interest in, in space exploration and what NASA does. What were your studies like back at MIT? How do you feel? How do you feel you've changed since then? Um, wow. <laughs> uh, well, I think I've, I've had the opportunity to broaden my understanding of Project Apollo. So um, in graduate school, I really focused on the role of Apollo within um, public diplomacy and foreign relations and uh, sort of as a form of soft power. And um, being at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum has given me the opportunity to focus on many other dimensions in the history of space flight and then also think about what resonates with people today. I'm curious, actually, you mentioned the politics of space flight. What exactly do you mean by that? I mean, I have an idea of what you mean, yeah. but... Uh, well, uh, I, t I tell everyone, go and listen to Kennedy's original speech when he proposed Project Apollo, and he, he really made it very clear that he was motivated by um, soft power and the potential of spaceflight to affect um, national security interests and national power. And he said, if we are to win um, the battle that's going around the world between freedom and tyranny, um, dramatic achievements in space should make it clear to us all, as did the Sputnik in 1957. Anyways, I, I'll just sum up. He said it's for the... Well, I'm enjoying. The hearts, and I can't do the Kennedy accent, but it's uh, about winning hearts and minds. It's about political alignment. It's very much a Cold War program, and um, Kennedy was, was motivated to, um, to demonstrate U.S. technological capability, managerial capability. Space flight was... Um, sort of the, the measuring stick of, of national power and prestige at that moment in time, and he recognized that. Um, and so it was an extremely important program when it comes to foreign relations. And um, I think often we forget that today, but that is what motivated Kennedy, and that was essential to why the nation at one point invested over 4% of the federal budget in, in spaceflight. My final question, 
someday, it could happen, I don't know if it'll happen from NASA or SpaceX, someday someone does walk on Mars, how do you think it'll compare to the moon that way? What do you I think, it, I think it will be an entirely different experience and it will resonate with people in a different way. So when Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, um, space exploration was, was still relatively brand new. So the first human was launched into space in 1961 and he was taking those steps in 1969. So it was, it was a brand new field. And then it's also important to remember the role of television. And, um, People at that time were just getting television sets in their house on a large scale, and um, by the end of the 1960s, there were television sets across America, but the first lunar landing was the first live global television broadcast, and that's an important part of that um, that mission, that experience, that moment, and the way that we remember it in history. It um, enabled the whole world to follow something in unison, and um, that was new at that time, and I don't know how we could recreate something new like that. So I think. When humans go to Mars, it's going to be, um, people are going to be excited for different reasons. Thank you. Thanks.